Friday, March 4th, about 10 minutes earlier than today. So for now, let's take a closer look at the Falcon 9 on the pad. Now on your screen is SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. This specific vehicle rolled out to the launch pad uh, yesterday morning in preparation for launch. The two-stage rocket stands 70 meters tall. That makes it 14 meters taller than the highest side of the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. Starting from the bottom, we have the first stage that's referred to as the booster. It makes up about 60% of the entire length of the Falcon 9 vehicle. You can see some of the dark soot around the lower part of the first stage. That is a remnant from its previous launches. Today's first stage is flying for its 11th time, previously having supported the GPS-3-3 mission, the Turksat 5A mission, Transporter 2, and seven previous Starlink missions. Falcon 9 was named after the famous Millennium Falcon from Star Wars, the 9 referring to its nine Merlin engines on the first stage, and their job is to accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere into various orbits in space, depending on the payload that we're flying. Above the first stage, we have our black carbon fiber inner stage. It's got that distinct color from the unpainted thermal protection system on the surface. This structure connects the first and second stages and houses our pneumatic pushers that are used during stage separation in flight, as well as the Merlin vacuum or MBAC engine on the second stage. Now the white portion of Falcon 9 above that black inner stage is the second stage. After the first and second stages separate about two and a half minutes into the flight, that second stage will ignite its Merlin vacuum engine and carry the Starlink payload into its destined orbit. The first stage will then return to planet Earth. We'll be attempting to recover it for an 11th time on our drone ship named Just Read the Instructions. Now above the second stage is our payload fairing. That's the nose cone at the very top of the rocket. It's protecting the Starlink satellites until we get to space. About three minutes into the flight, once we've exited most of the Earth's atmosphere, we'll jettison those fairing halves and attempt to retrieve them once they return to planet Earth. We wanna jettison those fairing halves as soon as we can because the weight of the fairing does decrease second stage performance. So once we're through the atmosphere, we don't need them on the vehicle anymore. Now you're hearing periodic uh, rocket sounds, some pops and hissing, and some callouts on the net about propellant loading. That started at the T minus 35 minute mark. Falcon 9 uses two propellants, a refined form of kerosene called RP-1, or rocket propellant one as its fuel, and then liquid oxygen or LOX as its oxidizer. The liquid oxygen is chilled well below its boiling point, so it has a much larger mass to volume ratio uh, at that lower temperature, and that means we can load more of it onto the rocket. In addition to these two propellants, we also use a chemical called TTAB, that's triethyl aluminum and triethyl borane, as an ignition source. So the combustion of the rocket propellant one and liquid oxygen is what makes the rocket go, but it's the T-tab that ignites that mixture to kick off the combustion reactions. Now, we'll be filling liquid oxygen onto the first and second stages as close as possible to the T minus zero mark as possible. That's to minimize the amount of time that that liquid oxygen can warm up in the tanks, allowing us to have more propellant on the vehicle in preparation for launch. And we've heard some periodic callouts here that the uh, fuel loading is complete on the stages. Next major milestone that you'll see will be related to the transporter erector, or the TE. That's that truss structure to the left of the second stage. In preparation for the transporter erector, you can see that the TE clamps right below the payload fairing have started to open. Shortly after, we'll see the transporter erector structure begin to pull away from the rocket slightly, and then uh, closer to T minus zero, we'll see the strong back fully retract excuse me, the TE fully retract away, clearing the way for Falcon 9 to lift off from the pad. Now, the TE is a structure that provides liquids, gases, and electrical connections to the second stage. It also uh, provides air conditioning to the payload. And you can see on your screen that it's starting to retract away from the second stage. 
Now, at this point in the mission, the first and second stages are almost completely loaded with propellants. Fuel loading is complete. Coming up in about 10 seconds, we'll hear a call out for liquid oxygen loading complete on the first stage, followed about a minute after by uh, liquid oxygen loading complete on the second stage. Speaking of that liquid oxygen, you're seeing uh, some, some gassy clouds around the vehicle. Those are actually caused by that liquid oxygen. We periodically vent some of the gaseous liquid oxygen in the tanks to maintain the pressure as we top it up. And once that cold uh, gaseous oxygen comes into contact with the Florida air, it actually causes water vapor to condense and forms literal clouds around the vehicle. Now uh, the payload, the Starlink payload continues to look healthy. We're not tracking any issues with this Falcon 9. Weather is continuing to look favorable and the range is green for launch. Coming up shortly, we will have uh, locks loading complete on the second stage. As we're coming into T minus two minutes to launch. Now, shortly after locks loading completes on the second stage, we will also see venting from the transporter erector. Call it there, indicating that propellant loading is complete in preparation for today's launch. Now, the, there's that venting from the transporter erector. As I mentioned earlier, it provides the fluids and gases to the vehicle. So as we're preparing for Very launch, we clear out those gases from the transport erector. In about 15 seconds, Falcon 9 will transition to internal control by its autonomous flight computers, referred to as startup. So from there, that means that the flight computers are in control of the launch countdown through the rest of the mission. And then shortly after... Falcon 9 is in startup. So with that, Falcon 9's uh, autonomous flight computers in control, just awaiting the final pull from the launch director. T minus 30 seconds. LD, go for launch. So just under 30 seconds to go. Launch director giving their final go for launch. Let's watch the final seconds here of terminal count as Falcon 9 takes these 47 Starlinks to low Earth orbit. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and liftoff. Plus 40 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 lifting off from Space Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. Power on telemetry nominal. Carrying 47 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Now, we just throttled down the Merlin 1D engines in preparation for max Q. That's the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Falcon 9 is supersonic. That's the point when the combination of the velocity of the vehicle and the density of the Earth's atmosphere put the highest stresses on the vehicle. Max Q. So with that, we are through the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Stresses on the vehicle will continue to decrease as we continue up to orbit. We've got three events happening in quick succession. First of those will be main engine cutoff, or MECO, followed by stage separation, and then second engine start number one, or SES-1. 
main engine cutoff uh, is where all nine of the Merlin 1D engines will shut down to slow down the vehicle in preparation for stage separation. That's where the first and second stages Start will separate show. using those pneumatic mechanisms in the interstage. Right after stage separation, the first stage will be making its way back to Earth for landing. And we will be attempting to recover the first stage today on a drone ship stationed out in the Atlantic named Just Read the Instructions. Vehicle is following a nominal trajectory. Now, while that's happening, stage two will continue on its journey with the third event, that's second engine start number one, or SEN1, SES1. It'll start its Merlin vacuum engine and take those Starlink satellites to orbit. It's coming up, just a few seconds. Miko, main engine cutoff, followed by stage SEP, and then SES1. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. Now we'll see pretty shortly here fairing deployment as well. And second engine stage startup. Fairing separation confirmed. So there on the right hand side of your screen, those Starlink satellites seeing space for the first time. There's a shot of the Merlin vacuum. You can actually see the fairing halves uh, heading back to planet Earth. And on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see the first stage deploying its grid fins. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Just a quick note on the fairing halves today. Um, one of those is flying for its third time. The other is flying for its fourth. And we will be attempting to recover both halves today using our recovery vessel named Bob. Now, stage two is continuing to its target orbit, the first stage which you can see on your left-hand side, has a couple of burns to make before it can make its way back to planet Earth. First of those is the entry burn. It'll ignite three of its Merlin 1D engines to slow down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. And then the second burn happens much closer to touchdown on that first stage. It'll ignite just its single center Merlin engine for the landing burn. And that's what brings the vehicle speed rapidly down to zero so we can have a soft touchdown on the drone ship. Right-hand side of your screen, you can see the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage with some beautiful High shots of, signal of Earth behind us. Glowing uh, that, that orange color. The second stage engine will continue to burn until about T plus eight minutes, so it's uh, got a few minutes to go here. If you're just joining us, we had successful liftoff of the Falcon 9 at 9.25 a.m. Eastern Time from the Kennedy Space Center, Space Launch Complex 39A. On the left-hand side of your screen is a live view of the first stage with its grid fins extended, preparing for its next major event, which is the entry burn. It's making its way to a drone ship stationed in the Atlantic named Just Read the Instructions, targeting its 11th landing. On the right-hand side of your screen is the second stage, carrying 47 Starlink satellites into an intended uh, drop-off orbit. Now, those uh, Merlin engines on these stages, uh, on the first stage, are actually optimized for sea level. They achieve about 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent, so during this portion of the mission, and now for descent, a similar amount of thrust. The Merlin vacuum engine is optimized for 220,500 pounds of thrust, and that's because the nozzle is significantly larger, allowing us to get more force out of the gases from combustion. You can see a couple of the grid fins on the Falcon 9's first stage on the left-hand side of your screen. Those hypersonic grid fins are near the top of the first stage, and uh, as we get back into the Earth's atmosphere, the first stage only uses those grid fins to steer back towards the drone ship. While we're in the uh, less dense parts of the Earth's atmosphere, you can see some periodic gas thrusters. That's from nitrogen gas. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. And that's orienting the vehicle as we get prepared for the entry burn start, which is coming up about uh, 20 or so seconds from now. During entry burn, we'll ignite three of the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage to slow down the vehicle 
as we start to hit the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one, entry burn, start up. Stage one, FPS is safe. So confirmation of entry burn startup. This burn lasting just about 20 seconds. You can see rapidly reducing the velocity of the first stage. Stage one, entry burn, shutdown. So confirmation of shutdown of the entry burn. From here, the grid fins are gonna play a more and more important role as we enter into the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And as we flew through uh, the exhaust plume from that entry burn, we actually deposited a layer of soot on the rocket. If you've uh, followed our missions before, you know that soot on a first stage indicates that we've flown it before. It actually comes from the rocket propellant one uh, kerosene combustion from Falcon 9's propellants. Rocket propellant one is a carbon-based propellant, so as we burn it, it generates Stage a little bit of soot, sonic. which is deposited onto the vehicle. Now coming up about 20 seconds from now, we'll have landing burn on the first stage. Uh, we may not have video confirmation of that part of the mission, so I'll try to give call-outs if I can hear them on the nets. And uh, simultaneously... So there's call out there for the landing burn start. Simultaneously, uh, during the landing burn, the landing legs will deploy on the first stage for hopefully a soft touchdown. And then the second stage, which we have on our screen, should also complete its first burn. Stage one, landing leg deploy. So four landing legs deployed on the first stage, confirmed by the ground control team. Center. Stage one, landing confirmed. And confirmation, 11th successful landing of that first stage. Pico. 26th overall landing on, just read the instructions. Here you can see a shot there. We also had a call out. Nominal orbit insertion. Two call outs there on the second stage. Confirmation of second engine cutoff and a nominal orbit, which means those Starlink satellites are right where they want to be for the upcoming payload deployment. Now, those 47 Starlink satellites are scheduled to be deployed about an hour from now. However, we won't have live audio or visual coverage uh, of the payload deployment due to a lack of ground station coverage at scheduled time. We will regain signal with our ground station at about T plus one hour and 19 minutes. So for those of you interested, we'll keep the audio only countdown nets up on our YouTube channel and we'll confirm successful Detected payload deployment on okay. our social media channels. So with that and this awesome shot of the first stage, we're going to bring today's webcast coverage to a close. Our team at SpaceX would like to thank the Range and the Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. We also want to take some time to thank our viewers and all of our Starlink customers for using our service at this time. For more information on Starlink, or if you're interested in signing up for service, head on over to Starlink.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again real soon.